Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Woody Banter Book Club podcast. I'm Maddie here with Courtney. Hello, and today we are filming on location. What location? I don't remember what it's called. We are at Springs Ranch. I think it's what it's just called, Spring Mountain Ranch in Las so, Vegas, yeah. Las Vegas, Nevada. And today we are reviewing the beloved. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Now, we did a review by Taylor Jenkins Reid for Ta- Taylor Jenkins Reid on Daisy Jones and the Six earlier this year. It's one of our favorite books. Yes. Um, she just, you know, phenomenal author. I don't think I like this one as much, but we'll kind of get mm-hmm. into that. Am I hosting this episode? Yes. Yes. Okay. Well, then. I will give you a brief synopsis for those of you who haven't joined us before. I'm going to give you a little bit of a summary about the book. We're going to do a spoiler-free section initially. Uh, Maddie and I will discuss whether or not we recommend this book, whether or not we recommend it to our teenage sisters. Um, And then we will touch on four categories, our pillars, and discuss what we rate those on a scale of one to five. The end, toward well, halfway through the episode, we will switch and do a spoiler review. So... Um, I will let you know when that's coming, but this book follows Evelyn Hugo, who's a Marilyn Monroe-esque movie star from the 1950s into the late 1980s, Um, and she came from Hell's Kitchen in New York, flew her way down to L.A. She used her husbands to move up in the Hollywood sphere and this follows her journey uh, to stardom and her relationship with the love of her life Celia St. James. Um, The kind of underlying story behind this is she has hired well she has enlisted a somewhat seemingly random writer from Vivant magazine to write her life story even though she has been relatively closed off (coughs) from the public. So um, there's a nice little twist at the end, but it's basically Evelyn telling her story to Monique, who is the writer for a biography after she passes away. Mm -hmm. Um, Overall, pretty wonderful story. I really enjoyed it. Uh, Maddie, would you recommend this book to a fellow reader? You know, so this book is huge on TikTok. Like Mm. people, I remember like with book book talk was getting really big that this was like the biggest thing to have you know Mm -hmm. it's like you got to read Evelyn Hugo and it's a great book but to be honest with you I think that she has like this is okay Seven Husbands was her first celebrity book Mm -hmm. okay so there are flaws okay and we'll get into it in the spoiler section but I think overall it was a really fun read I had a good time reading it. Yeah. I thought that, like, I just loved the story. There are definitely elements of it that you and I have mentioned before that I just feel like the book could have done without. Mm. But uh, overall, I think it was really great. And, uh, yeah, you know, I would recommend it. Um, but I'd recommend Daisy Jones first. So, Yeah, I agree. And this book, Taylor Jenkins Reid has an interesting... There's a bug interrupting us. <clears throat> has hey, Cicada, stop it such as life and nature um she has a really interesting writing style though right so daisy jones and the six was written not in like a chapter element but more of just like a stages of life this book did have chapters but it was broken up by husband which i thought was kind of interesting i would recommend this book but there are other taylor jenkins read books (laughs) i would recommend before i would recommend this one um it was a bit of a lengthy read for me just because I felt like I needed to take a break in between. And Taylor Jenkins' read isn't really heavy on the romance, which is what I've been super into lately. So it's not necessarily like her fault. Still a good book though. And I would recommend Now, would you recommend it to your younger sisters? Uh, I mean, yeah. I don't think either of them would be particularly interested. Yeah. But I, I would, yeah. There's no reason not to. I don't think that there's really, I mean... There's, like, a little bit of, like... Risque. Risqueness, but it's not, like... I mean, it's, like, risque for, like, the 1950s. So, like, (laughs) not really super... Detailed. Detailed or anything like that, so... Um, I might. I don't think my sister would like this book either, just because it feels more of, like, a... 
it feels more of like a historical fiction, to be honest. Um, and that's just not really any of my sister's speed, per se. I didn't find it to be like super out there. It wasn't very graphic with any of the sexual type content. It was really just kind of glossed over as more about her Evelyn Hugo's career and her love for Celia. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't think it's a, a red flag for teenagers. No, I think that I think that it's fine if a teenager is reading it. There's like, I mean, there's like not really any graphic scenes at all. Yeah. It's basically just her retelling a story about all of her loves. So, yeah, I mean, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So our pillars that we normally do, and some of these won't be super applicable just because this isn't, um, it has romance elements, but it's not a romance novel like we typically review on this channel. Um, so what we typically do for our pillars, it is witty banter, character development, smut, and realism. Um, so obviously some of those categories are gonna be a little bit more applicable, but we are going to start off with witty banter. And on a scale of one to five, Maddie, what would you rate this book? Uh, I just don't think there was any witty banter in the book. Um, it was mostly, is told from it's okay so it's essentially Evelyn is retelling the story to the main character of the story who is Monique but the main character of the story is Evelyn so it's it's told in hindsight from a narrator who's narrating their own life and they're gonna leave out a lot of like the dialogue stuff it's yeah. kind of like Daisy Jones where like it leaves out a lot of like dialogue between yeah people. but like it's like it's, it's kind of yes and it's like kind of implied what was being said and you have to deal with the fact that like Evelyn is telling the, her own story so like mm -hmm. she's gonna admit a bunch of stuff about things that make her look bad or don't make her look she wants them said in a very specific way yes. and she she tells the author that she like she wants this to be like a real image of her and she wants to communicate that she's not necessarily like a good person but at the same time she's barely very particular about like the way things are communicated mm -hmm. i don't really think there's any witty banter either there's mostly what i could equate to being close to witty banter or adjacent is just evelyn using certain elements of herself to bargain her way up to the top yeah. Um, you know, and making these deals with men to get married, essentially, to benefit her career and their careers, uh, using people. Those are really the only kind of conversations that we have. And for the most part, Monique and Evelyn have a very, like, respect-driven relationship because she really wants to write and sell the story. Monique does. Um, and so she's very respectful of Evelyn's time, and Evelyn is a massive star who doesn't open up very often, so she wants to make sure she doesn't make any missteps that being said i don't know i i guess like a two yeah i realized it didn't give it a numeric value i guess i'm gonna give it a one i yeah. just it's it's just not there you just know wasn't there doesn't mean it's not a good book yes and we've said that before we've said this hundreds of times these are just things that we look for in like romance novels this one isn't really like a romance novel it just has romance in it yeah so some of the categories aren't going to be as applicable yes but, um then we have character development and what would you rate that on a scale of one to five? Um, I guess I'd be a five, right? Because well, it's hard. Because once again, it's a story of Evelyn telling her story. And you get to see Evelyn grow. But then you also have Monique, who's the person who is telling the story, I guess. And Monique... We'll get into this, but I think that she's, like, an obsolete character. I think that this book yeah. could have 100% done without Monique. I just, like... I understand... Uh, we'll get into it. It definitely but, like, could have just been, like, a biography. Yes. Almost. Yes. A fake biography. But. Yes. And Evelyn, I think... She had interesting character development. I think... Mm. The problem is that we didn't get to see a lot of the other characters' character development. Like, Celia, to me has no character development throughout the book. She remains the same the entire time. Yes, I also don't like Celia. I don't like much, Celia either. We'll get into that in the She's spoiler a section. Horrible person in my opinion. In my humble yeah. opinion. I think 
I think this book serves a five on character development for a couple of reasons. One is, like, most of the time we look at where the character starts off and where they end, and we hope that they have some sort of growth, right? And I don't want to say that Evelyn doesn't have that, but the, the kind of underrunning theme of this story is that, like, Evelyn will do whatever she has to to get to the top. She'll use her body, she will manipulate people, she will use them. And at the end, I think it's really just her coming to realize that she's, like, not a bad person. Or not not a good person, she is kind of a bad person. But she got everything she wanted out of life, and now she wants to share that with the world. So I do think that that's growth on a certain level. I think that acknowledgement really fed into her character development, right? Because, like, I think for a long time, even in the book it's like Evelyn knows that she's doing these things, but she doesn't think she's like a bad person to her core. And at the end, it's just kind of like a, I made mistakes, I lived my life, I was a person, mm -hmm. maybe not a good one, but I've left my mark. I changed the saturation really quick <laughs> because I felt like we were being really washed out. So I turned it down one, anyway. Um, but yeah, so the underlying story is about Monique getting divorced, kind of being down in her career. She's got a really good job, but she's not writing what she wants to write. Um, and Monique's character development is that she is able to, like, decide when to let things go and when to stand up for herself, which I think was a pretty good lesson, but it just wasn't integral to the story, and it felt very rushed at the end. Yes. So, um, overall, though, like, the characters were compelling. They were interesting, um, especially Evelyn uh, and Harry, who is one of her husbands, and I think they were really fleshed out well, so I do think it deserves a five also. Yeah, I thought, yeah, I think it was good. Because uh, Evelyn's was great. Mm -hmm. But the other characters just... So, but the story's about Evelyn, so yeah. it's, it's hard to, like, really judge yeah. others, the character development of others, but... Yeah, yeah. I agree. Uh, and this category is probably not going to be super relevant, but we usually rate on smut, so scale one to five. Um, I think that when we did Daisy Jones, we did imagery mm. instead of okay. in lieu let's of smut. let's do imagery then imagery one to five uh five i could picture yeah. everything that was happening in this book in my head like a little movie i agree and it felt like a little movie it was very the author is very descriptive about like outfits appearances um even like auras right like right. general vibes that the characters were giving off you could feel like you were like sitting in a room with them or watching mm -hmm. them on the screen when she was describing the movies they were acting in mm -hmm. um and so it was a very like immersive experience i would say it felt yeah. like you were in 1950s and 1960s hollywood um so I, I think i'll give it a five on that as well yeah i think i just really you know i really enjoyed reading it there was like parts of this book where i just like i couldn't put it down Mm -hmm. um, but there was other parts that I was just like, okay. Yeah. And on a side note, like, there is, I, there isn't really smut. That they, she talks about when she's, like, hooking up with certain people. She was married seven times, obviously. Yeah. Look at the title. Yes. Um, and she was also in love with Celia St. James. So there, there's a few references to, like, oh, a little lizard. Look at that lizard. He's so cute. Um... There's a few references to, like, sex in general. Um, it's mostly just from Evelyn's perspective on what it meant to her, whether it was a power play or something that was, like, intimate um, and valuable to her, a valuable experience. But it just wasn't really, like, there wasn't a compelling element of the story, to be honest. Yeah, it just kind of, like, was there. But mm -hmm. it, I mean, like... The most descriptive scene is definitely her first time with Celia. Mm -hmm. But that's it. But you have to keep in mind that, like, it's not going to be her being, like, super descriptive because she's telling the story to somebody else. Yeah. And describing the nature <laughs> of those things Awkward. are not something that normal people do. No. So, yeah, yeah I... I liked it, though. Yeah, I did, too. Um, and then our final element is realism. Mm -hmm. Scale of 1 to 5. I know what you're going to say. <laughs> oh. I can't relate to it because I'm not famous and I don't know any of this. But um, 
overall, you know, <laughs> as an observer of the Hollywood sphere, getting married seven times doesn't seem totally yeah out of the ordinary. And knowing the way that, like, Hollywood has treated women throughout the 50s and the 60s and 70s and 80s and 90s and the 2000s and the 2010s and the 2020s, <laughs> um, I think that, I think it's pretty realistic. I mean, definitely, like, the fact that, like, people were trying to bring Evelyn down for her risque acts and her, you know, eventually, like, getting, like, uh, she filmed, like, an R, uh, they were called X movies back then, um, and just, like, trying to be too much at a time where being too much was... Dangerous. Danger- yeah, it was, like, a bad thing. Um, but it seems pretty realistic to me, so I'm going to give it a four, just because I agree with Courtney and that I can't relate to it 100%, because I'm not famous or have been married seven times. And I'm 25 now, and by the time she was 25, she'd been married, like, what, three three or four three times? Three or four times, yeah. so. Um, yeah, I mean, Maddie's agreeing with me before I even give my opinion, but she knows what I'm going to say. I, however, I do think it is very realistic in the sense that, like, these characters aren't glamorized. They all have issues, which I think is also very realistic for Hollywood, and... Evelyn really portrays that like everyone's out for themselves and the things that she does are for her benefit mostly to protect her career to uplift her in her career um and it comes at the cost of a lot of other people's happiness lives and success yeah um so I thought that was realistic because there's no climb to the top where you're not stepping on other people's shoulders or or throwing them you know, mm-hmm. under the bus. So I thought that was very realistic. I'm going to give it a four as well. Okay. Um, and I, I think, like, just the general ambiance that the author created contributed to that as well. Mm-hmm. The realistic element. Um, and, and also, I mean, like, Evelyn throughout her career is hiding that she is bisexual and that Celia's lesbian. And that um, Harry is gay. Yeah. yeah. And, and that's, I feel like, realistic for the time period as well, obviously. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah, I think it's a, a four overall rating, one to five. Overall, I gave it a four because I did not love the modern parts mm-hmm. of this book. Uh, I think that's what kind of did it for me was mm-hmm. just like it would have been a five because I loved hearing about Evelyn's story and about all of her husbands and the drama and everything like that. Um, but I just did not like the setup for it I just was not a fan I felt like once again I feel like Monique was just like her omitting her story from the story wouldn't have changed the story yeah and I think that it just kind of is like the reasoning why she was selected and everything like that it all felt very like rushed towards the end not super developed out um so for that reason I gave it a four yeah, I think I'll give it a four also, like, on the lower end of a four, to be honest. It just, like, there's some books that I just can't put down, and this wasn't necessarily one of them. Like, I definitely wanted to finish it. It was a compelling story, but some parts of it were just kind of boring to me, to be honest. And, I don't know, I wish they would have, I wish the author would have written this kind of more how they writ- wrote Daisy Jones, mm-hmm. where you can tell that it's being told retrospectively, but there isn't like a ton of involvement from the person who's like we find out at the end that it's who who the person telling the story is and and their significance right I think that could have been done at the end right um but I I don't know and I think I got confused a couple of times the way the author split it up because it would switch from being about Evelyn to like being about Monique and her writing the story but there wasn't always necessarily a good transition for you to grasp that right right off the bat um and yeah I don't know I I don't think like Monique's story contributed a lot to the story at at, by the point we find out like what their connection is you already kind of get a holistic view of Evelyn like Mm -hmm. she's famous she's not a good person she did what she had to to get where she is right and that just continues like whatever what happens feeds into that narrative but it's already so well established that it just didn't really need to be there in my opinion either so yeah 
a four. Still, it's still a good book. It's still worth your time. I don't think it was worth necessarily all the hype. Yeah. There are books I would recommend before this one. Tons of books. That's, that's just like the problem with um, TikTok books because, example, I've mentioned it a million times. Twisted Love. Terrible. Horrible. Like truly one of the worst books I have ever read in my life. Red, white, and royal blue, though? It's giving. A masterpiece. Yeah. Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo falls kind of, I mean, closer to red, white, and blue, but it's just sort of like... You know what I think the issue is? What? I think it's the same issue with, like, a lot of books, even ones that I read last year that I was like, this is so great. I think that a lot of people were getting back into reading when they read this. Yeah. And like, they just didn't have a lot of other books to compare it to. Yeah. So they overinflated how good it was in their heads because they just didn't have like a really good p- comparison. And at this yeah. point, you and I have been blowing through books for like a year straight. So we have a really good reference point for like what's good literature. Um, and this is good literature, but it's just not as like impactful. Yeah. I also, like, we should do a whole podcast about my theory of the books that you read when you first get back Mm -hmm. into reading, Mm -hmm. because I have a lot of thoughts on this topic in particular, because I feel like if you haven't read in a while and you pick up a book and you really like it, you're going to, like, just die for that book. But if you've been reading a lot and you read that same book, it's it's a bunny. Oh, my gosh. It's a big-ass rabbit. That's a rabbit. Yeah, that's not... That's not a bunny. That's not a little bunny. Oh, there's another rabbit. What if we just got attacked by rabbits right now? Rabid. They're like, how dare you slander our queen, Evelyn Hugo. (laughs) No, they're for Celia. Yeah. Uh, We'll get into that. I I do not like Celia. I think she's a horrible person. We're going to get into that right now, in fact. So... Wait, should Uh, we have a little snack before? Yeah. Also, before you guys leave to click off this video because you haven't read the book yet... Because you know our rule. Uh, if you haven't read the book, leave and come back. Get out of here. So we can talk about spoilers. Um, but if you don't care, hi, whatever. Uh, before you go, though, uh, we do have an Etsy shop where we are selling bookmarks. They're so cute. We don't have the monos right yeah, now. Yeah, because we are in the desert. Yeah. I know it doesn't look like we're in the desert because there's a patch of grass behind us and some mountains. Well, this is the only rock patch formations. of grass in the area. Well, there's a little one over there, too. Well, um vicinity but you get the point right like we're out here but we've got some cute ass bookmarks so if you Mm want to go hit those up (laughs) go for it we're gonna take a little snack break yeah take a little a little eatery and then um we'll be back with with some spoilers i feel like we're in the hunger games (laughs) these are from our sponsors We already ate. We just ate, by the way. So I'm feeling a little energized now. We had some... I had a wrap. Maddie had a a Sammy. We did. Um, We also spent the last few days... We binge-watched all of Twilight and The Hunger Games. So... Twilight was awful. Here's the thing. It has certain cinematic value. Yes. To be sure. Yes, definitely. But it was dog shit. Yes. Dialogue, terrible. Bella Swan, awful. Breaking Dawn Part 1 is the most... It's almost as obsolete as There's Monique. There's three things that happen. Yeah. Three. That's literally how Monique is. Um, and then we watched The Hunger Games, which still still holds up pretty well. Yeah. I had convinced myself, for some reason, that I'd never seen the last two Hunger Games movies. But I was watching them, and I'm like, oh, wait, do they, like, do this? And she's like, I think so. And then they do it, like, literally the next scene. And I'm like, oh, wait, no, I've definitely seen these before. Yeah. So I was just trying to be, like, not other girls and have not seen The Hunger Games, but I was lying. I have definitely seen those movies before. Yeah. We were trying to find other series to watch, but really the only other one we want to do is Harry Potter, and we have to wait till we read the books. Yeah. Anywho, now that we are nourished, um, we will move on yes. to the spoiler portion. Parson. 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 Of our review. Um, there are things to be said. Yeah. About this book. Perhaps we could go by husband. I was, you know, I was actually thinking that I marked up a bunch of stuff to talk about in this one because I just feel like... <sighs> okay, I guess we should just start with the background and how we get to where we are at. Yes. So, 
basically, the book begins with Monique. She works at Vivant. 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 That's how you say it. A magazine. Yeah, it's a, a magazine, and they, like, do, like, celebrity stuff, and... She's been down on her luck a little bit with yeah. her writing career. Yeah, plus she's just in the process of getting divorced, which is hard for Sad. everybody. Nobody would know divorce better than Evelyn Hugo, who's been divorced six, six times. Oh, true. Yeah. Yeah. No, five. She, Harry died. They weren't married. Harry? She wasn't married to Harry. Yeah, they were going to get a divorce, but he died before they got no. divorced. No. Yes. No, they did not get married again. They didn't get divorced. Yes, they did. Oh, he he died. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. I'm sorry. (laughs) They got divorced after John died. I'm sorry. Yeah. (laughs) Disregard. Yeah, just ignore her. She doesn't know what she's talking about. It's okay. We all have those moments. (laughs) Shut up. Anyway. Okay, so so she's kind of, you know, she's down on her luck. She's not having the best time right now. And she goes into work. And her boss, Frankie, she's like, hey, um, I got this crazy email Yeah, from Evelyn Hugo. She wants you to come over to her house and do a story for Vivant on dress auction, dress auction, because Evelyn is selling her beautiful gowns to raise money for breast cancer because her daughter has just died of breast cancer. Yeah. Now, <laughs> she is first of all frankie bitch yeah okay she's like um she sent that back and we sent back a bunch of names that we think to do it instead because like why would she want you because you because you suck, suck. You're the like worst. you're not a good writer you're not like up there yet why would she pick you yeah so we were like trying to get like somebody who's like really qualified and yeah. like good and evelyn was like no evelyn's like no i want monique and you're sitting there thinking what could possibly be the reason why she wants monique we will talk about it. We'll get but there. But it's stupid, and this whole part could have just been omitted. omitted. So anyway, so Monique heads over. She's, like, doing her research. She watches, like, a bunch of movies about Evelyn Hugo and, like, is preparing to have this conversation with her mm-hmm. to, for Vivant magazine. Yeah, and Frankie's like, she's going to play hardball, so you got to play hardball back yeah. to get that story. Yeah. So she's trying to prepare. Mm-hmm. So she knows what questions to ask. So she shows up to uh, Ev- oh my gosh, she shows up at Evelyn's, and what happens? Evelyn's like, "This is how it's gonna go." Yeah, and you're gonna listen, or you're gonna get the fuck out. Um, yeah. And so she's like, "Listen, babes, I wanted you," and she's like, "Yeah, I know, but why?" She's like, "Because I don't want to do a story for Vivant. I don't care about them. I was just going through them to get to you. I want you to write my life." memoir to which Monique goes beg pardon because Evelyn is notoriously out of the media for the last two decades three decades um and so they lay out some ground rules Mm -hmm. if you'd like to the ground rules are essentially that like the story can be written okay so Evelyn's gonna tell her the story the whole story and then Monique can choose to put what she wants into a memoir about her and then publish that book after uh, Evelyn dies. Uh, and they're like, okay, why, why after she dies? Like, what could she be possibly hiding? And that's the same question Monique has. And she's like, well, I'm going to tell you everything. I'm going to go back to the very beginning and I'm going to tell you my entire life story. All the tea. All of it. And... Monique, she's kind of battles with herself for a minute, being like, ooh, this is kind of, you know, a little bad. Like, I shouldn't be poaching this story from... Corporate opportunities. Yeah, from the corporation that I work for. My legal professors would be so proud right now. <laughs> Hopefully they're not watching. Mm, definitely <laughs> Hopefully not. they have no idea this exists. If you are, get out of here. <laughs> you don't get this side of me. Um, <laughs> yeah, so she's like, Mm, what do I do? And everyone's like, quit being a bitch and take Nut this up. opportunity. You like, you're gonna make millions. Who cares about your writing job? Yeah. At um, Vivant Magazine. And then she's like, can I think about it? And everyone's like, I'll see you tomorrow. Stupid. <laughs> you freaking idiot. I'll yeah. see you tomorrow. And, moron. And so of course she shows up because she's not that big of a moron, apparently. Yes. 
And we start with our first husband, poor, poor Ernie, Ernie Diaz. Diaz. And this, he, yeah. In this section, we get a little bit about Evelyn's backstory, who she is, where she comes from, right? She is Cuban. Cu- she's Cuban, and she is, you know, she speaks Spanish at home. She's got dark hair, and she's, like, very pretty, and yeah. she's Her mom oh, is dead. Yeah. Sad. Uh, her mom was uh, like, I'm going to be a movie star and get us out of poverty, which is like her inspo. And, her and dad, then I'm also going to die. Yeah. Her dad, piece of shit. It's implied that he's like drunk and also a little like perverted because he is like making eyes at her and yeah. stuff. And so he wants to like marry her off to his boss or something. She's like, no, I need to get out of here. I need to find a marriage. It's going to yes. work for me. And so then we meet. Poor Ernie Diaz. Yes, and she tells she sees him, and she's like, "He is my ticket out of here." Mm-hmm. I don't remember what it is exactly about him that makes her think that it's his, that it's her ticket out of there. I don't remember, but I think he was interested in her, mm-hmm. and she could tolerate him, and he would move her to yeah. California, get so, her out of Hell's Kitchen. That is what happens. She Trades tells her virginity. Him, yep, she's like, "I will marry you," and. In addition to that, I'd like to move to California. And he's like, okay, that's fine. She also lies to him. She tells him that she's 18 when she's only yeah. 16 years old. And her dad signs the papers to sign her away. And she's out of there. I she's... think she might have even been younger than that. No, I think she was 16. Maybe I, keep... I think she lied about being 16. I think she was like 15. Because um, the rules were different back then. You yeah, know? you know. Because she got married her second time at like 19 or something. Yeah. Anyways. So she they move. They move to California. She's like poaching all these hot spots, right? She's sitting at mm-hmm. this bar, this coffee shop every day, waiting to be noticed. I think some bartenders like, I know what you're doing. And if you're gonna be here, you might as well put in some work. Mm-hmm. Eventually, she does, in fact, get noticed um, for her <coughs> beautiful face and yeah. her giant breasts. Um, yeah. And she I and think she, she has no hairy. and she has no ass. Yeah, she does. No ass. She has no ass. And that is funny for a couple of reasons. One, when have you ever seen a Cuban woman who has no ass? Never. So she's very unique. <laughs> um, <laughs> Indeed. Well, it's just I don't know. They're blessed. Yeah, truly, on all fronts. Yes. So she meets Harry. Harry. Harry Cameron. Yep. And he's like, damn, baby, you're going to be a star. And not a creepy way, because he's gay. Um, and he's like, let's go meet Ari, this piece of shit. And she's like, cool, yeah. great. They give her her makeover. Mm-hmm. She like, gets blonde hair. They change blonde. her name to, to try and make her sound like she's white. Yeah. And Evelyn Hugo instead of Evelyn Herrera. Although, to be honest with you, I don't really think the last name Hugo gives me very, like, White Welcome. vibes, yeah. yeah. True. It's almost like Slavic E, but Hugo. Hugo, I don't know. Let us know in the comments. Anyways. Maybe it's just um, because like I just think of like Hugo Chavez. Ah. Uh, so I'm thinking like do it. Latin American. But yeah. it's his first name, not his last name. But they change her up. They make yeah. her more palatable, if you will, mm-hmm. to the Hollywood market. And then Ari Sullivan, the head of the studio. It's her out on his desk. Gross. Because she's a perv. And she's also, like, 17 years old. And then she's like, I know what I need to do. I need to get a divorce. So, well, no. No, no, no. She meets Don Adler. Right? And then she gets divorced. Well, no, cause she, maybe. She's going on dates with other people first. Was she? Yeah. Oh, okay. No. So her relationship with Ernie started going down the hill because she was in a movie. Mm-hmm. And he was like, my wife's in a little movie, ha, 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 ha. How cute but is like, that? And she was like, um. But, like, the thing is, I don't think he was saying it to be mean, but she was like, so, she says, I wanted to punch his lights out. Yeah, he wasn't a good, he, I mean, like, he wasn't a bad person. She just was using him, so. Yeah. But they get divorced, <laughs> and she's like, Don Adler, the hot and up-and-coming actor in Hollywood right now. They hit it off immediately. Yeah. And he's seen around town with other women, but he's like, Let's do this, baby. Yes. Also, really quickly, she was 14 when she got married. Mm-hmm. So, you were right. Yeah, far too young. See, it all happens. Um, so, you know, 
eventually they're like, we really need you to be single because we need you to seem appealable to the audience. So she is like, okay, then I guess I'll get divorced from Ernie. They get divorced and she felt kind of bad about it at first, but in hindsight, since she's telling the story from the past or from the future about the past, she's kind of been like, you know, I've kind of accepted that what I've done to him, it, it, it worked out for both of us. This and is, he got married. He but this, kids. Is, this is the flaw of Evelyn is that I don't think Evelyn really understands. And this is like what Celia talks about, too, is that she never really understands that her actions have consequences mm. that will impact other people. So like True enough. Yes, she did everything she could to get out of whatever. Yes, it's a little weird that Ernie married a 14-year-old. But, like... <laughs> I don't know. They were just stepping stones. Yeah, and that's kind of like... That's like Evelyn's flaw, is that she uses people to make sure that she can obtain this level of power that she wants and desires and whatnot. Yes, so she gets divorced. We're on to... She starts dating. She's dating... Um, let's see, Brick, what's his nuts? Brick Thomas, Ed Baker. She's going on dates. Yeah, she's. And then she meets Don Adler. Yes. Who is. The goddamn Don Adler. He's coming up. We're on Don Adler. He's. Mm -hmm. They hit it off, and he's incredibly handsome. This is the first person Evelyn's like, I think I actually like this person. So, Mm -hmm. me being attracted to him is like cool and i can use them to promote my career she wants to be in little women and they're like no you need to like be in these roles first and work your way up to it and she's like you know who's gonna help me get that role hmm. don adler mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. do you know why because he's sunset studios golden boy at the moment yes. because he's just young and handsome and charismatic yeah and everybody just really likes him a lot and you know she just like she really does like him a lot but the problem with Don is that he you know they get engaged and everything's going really well but the second that they're married he starts abusing her yeah he and he you know she's like she makes excuses for it for mm-hmm. a long time cuz mm-hmm. she actually likes him um eventually she comes to her senses but he also is just has such a fragile ego for such yeah. an up and coming man, and uh, their fucking housemaid. Yeah. Pardon my French. Um, she sells. A, she is Evelyn's being hit right, and the maid comes in to do something, and Evelyn yells at her to get out because she doesn't want her to see her bruises. And what does the maid do? She sells a story that she's like Evelyn is not being a good wife mm-hmm. to Don Adler. She's not cooking for him. And she's also so mean to the help. Mm. Um, and there's no mention of the domestic violence, None. which the maid has witnessed. So right. instead, Evelyn's like, I know what to do. We're going to plant a trap story for this little minx mm-hmm. to release to the public. Well, there's a couple of things that happen in between there's there. There's plenty of things, I'm sure. So one... This is during this time period when she's with Dawn is when she finds out that Harry is gay. Um, Because she's like, Harry, why didn't you, like, ever try to make a move? And he's like, because I don't want it, sis. Um, That's all he does. And and then she's like, let's be best friends. Because what girly pop does not want the gay bestie? Yeah. Can't think of any. She's maybe, like, the worst ones. Ugh. We don't talk about those here. Yeah. So, I am. Yeah. And then... You know, they, they, they film a movie together, and then it was during this time that he starts, like, hitting her at, like, while they're filming. And to be honest, a, a lot of it has to do with Don losing some of his momentum in Hollywood, which is something that we see a lot with men who are abusive. It's on their good days, they're, they're fine, fine, but on their bad days, they're really bad. And it's all your fault that their yeah. career isn't going the way that they want, or, yeah, because you're not being a good enough yeah so he was his career was going down and Evelyn's was going up so he was very jealous and the only way that he could take it out was violently so and then he like apologizes he does the whole the whole uh shebang the the common whatever um and then the maid walks in and sees that she's got bruises chooses to ignore that does the whole story yep 
Mm-hmm. And then they get... And then she meets... She gets, she meets Celia because yeah, Celia's in Little Women. Yeah, she yeah. gets Little Women finally. The the movie she's wanted forever. She mm-hmm. finally gets it with the movie she's been filming and the help of John Adler. And we meet Celia and Ruby and a couple other people, but we don't really care about them. No. Um, and Celia is described as like girl next door from Savannah, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, very beautiful blue eyes, long red hair. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> um, so me. And uh, they hit it off pretty instantly. Celia's like, oh my god, I don't know why you don't like me. And yeah. all the other actresses don't like her because she's good, obviously. She's a great actress and she knows she's good. And she also knows that she's pretty. So yeah. she's using all those things to her advantage. Right. And at this point, Evelyn is more famous than her. So she's like, Evelyn, let's go to this like really public place to get a shake. And she's trying to play it off like Miss Nice Girl, and everyone's like, I see right through you. You're trying to use me. If you're gonna do it, at least own it. So they go to this random shake shop instead. Mm -hmm. And she's like, all right, we can be friends. I'm gonna teach you how to work your way through Hollywood. And they start hanging out. And Evelyn's slowly like, Celia's kinda pretty. But like in like a friend way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) Celia's really pretty, but like, in a friend way. Um, yes. Uh, so then we find out, you know, that... So Celia is having this little bit of a sexuality crisis because she's like, I like Celia as a friend. At the same time, she and Don clearly not having a great relationship because he's abusive. And she... The news puts out an article about how they live in this beautiful, big-ass house, and they have no kids. And she's mean to the help. And she's mean to the help. And um, how everything's all about her, and she's leaving Dawn so very unsatisfied. And so she's like, this is bullshit. Like, this is just not true. Whatever. And she starts hanging out with Celia a lot more also during this time, but as friends. (laughs) <laughs> and she's trying to figure out how to salvage yes. herself after this article and she knows that the maid is the rat right so what she does is she essentially plants this story that she had a miscarriage and then they fire the maid because mm-hmm. they're like who better to take a fake story to the media than someone who's been recently disgruntled yes in their employment yep so um you know they go and they tell the that she's had a miscarriage or like had several miscarriages at this point and then everyone's like oh my oh god, my god she's not withholding children from dawn she's, she's just, just infertile she can't have kids oh my god it's so sad saves her reputation yes but then after what an award show yeah dawn gets a little drunky he's a little mean mm-hmm. meany meaner um, and he decides he's going to get some toppy in the bathroom from... Yeah, they go to a party where Celia wins, right? She wins... Something like For Little Women, maybe? Yeah, I think she wins For Little Women, and so... He's cheating, though. Yeah. He'd be cheating. Celia, or, or, uh, Evelyn's, like, really happy for Celia because Celia did he's great. Well, and she yeah. was She played Beth, so she was a fan favorite. Um... Speaking of Little Women, we are dressed like we are in Little Women today. I told Courtney that she is Beth. Because I'm diabetic. Yeah, although I don't think she died of diabetes. I think she had tuberculosis or something. It's fine, because <laughs> Celia did the best in that movie because she played Beth. So. Oh, okay. So, they go to a party, and... Or they're about to go to a party... And they're, like, trying on outfits. She and spills Evelyn, something on her clothes. Yes. And then Evelyn sees Celia without a shirt on, and she's like, whoa. She's got, like, crazy That's freckles on her hip. Oh, my God. Nice rack, but, like, in a straight way. Yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so then they go to their event. They go to the premiere. And the premiere is great. Everything is fine. And then she cries when Beth dies. So this is before the award show. She cries when Beth dies and then Don rolls his eyes at her because Don sucks and she says he's going to find an excuse to hit me later but it'll be for this which means that Don 
I think she's kind of omitting part of it here that Don is catching on to her and Celia. Yeah, but he's they're a piece just of shit right and now. Cheating anyway. Well, right now they're like in like a a weird flirty friendship where it's not like I, neither of them have crossed that line, but it is like looming in the backdrop. It's imminent. Yes, and I think Don can see that. And part of the story is that like. We don't know what else is happening because we're only hearing it from Evelyn's perspective. So there could be a lot more going on that we just don't know about. Um, so, yeah. So then, you know, she talks to some people and then she finds out that she's a lesbian. Not Evelyn. Yeah, Celia is a lesbian. Riley's like... Ruby. Did you, or Ruby. Riley. She's like, did you know Celia's a lesbian? And Evelyn, it's like a aha moment. And... Simultaneously, she finds out that Don is upstairs getting the toppy from some random lady. Yes. Um, so she's like, I'm going to find Celia. This is my chance. Don, he's, she's equally hurt by his actions and excited when she finds out that Celia likes women. Yeah. So she goes upstairs. They do a little... Well, and then here on page 123 is when she admits that the love of her life was Celia St. James. And then... Um, she talks about how she's bisexual, but there wasn't a word for it back then, so she didn't really understand what was happening. And that plays into Celia's character in a little bit. One of her most annoying aspects, in my opinion, is that mm. she's always trying to put her into a box. Yeah, she. there's a part of the book where Evelyn's like, when Celia loved me, I was a lesbian. When she hated mm-hmm. me, I was straight. Right. Um, and I think it's just the difficulty Celia had reconciling like Celia is only attracted to women I don't think she can understand how Evelyn is attracted to both genders and honestly you can't really blame Celia a ton because just like sexuality was something that just wasn't really talked about a lot back then um and I mean we see things that happen throughout this book that involve you know LGBT rights like the stone they mentioned the Stonewall riots and they talk about all the protesting afterwards and the riots afterwards and how you know they're scared a huge part of you know the story is that Evelyn's just scared of losing everything for coming out being gay which is obviously something that's very different to now but yeah and then she decides to get divorced from Don. Yeah. And he wants to blacklist her, and he does, essentially. So she's kind of down in the dumps, but her, at least her and Celia can kind of... They still continue to hang out um, and develop their relationship. They start to see each other more seriously, right, now that she's decided she's getting a divorce. But her career has taken a massive hit because of her divorce from Don Adler. hmm yeah, so, you know, then we, like, have a little bit of, like, a separation part where um, she, like, is, like, Monique is leaving, and she's just, like, is it really seem like anything you've done has been so bad so far? And Ellen's, like, just you wait. Just you wait. Yeah, and uh, the media is also starting to get suspicious of how often Evelyn and Celia are hanging out. So yes. Evelyn's, like, I need to do something about this. Enter gullible McReva. Yes. Um, McReva is a star. He was featured in um, Daisy Jones and the Six. Yes. They they went on tour. The Sixth. They went on tour with him. Um, and he is also the father of the main characters of Malibu Rising. Yes. So um, McReva is well known in the sphere. sphere. Also, I haven't read Car- uh, Carrie Soto's back yet, but I'm assuming that he plays a minor role in that as well because Carrie Soto's story is intertwined with um, Nina's and Nina is the main character in Miles Rising. So, gotcha. So, they are trying to divert attention away mm-hmm. from themselves because Evelyn wants to protect her career in Celia because people are not allowed to be gay in Hollywood at this time. Although, before we get into it, Celia does win her thing. Her Oscar, mm. and since Evelyn is blacklisted currently because she of Don, watches. she watches from home, and she kisses the TV and she chips, chips her tooth. I'm we'll like, how how hard are you kissing yeah. the, the screen? Oh my gosh! We'll come back to that later as well. <laughs> um, but so Evelyn cracks this plan. She's like, Mick Reva has 
announce to the world that he desires me. So I'm going to manipulate the fuck out of him. I'm going to get him to marry me. I'm going to get him to annul our marriage just to get the media talking about anything else. So mm-hmm. she does precisely that. She lures him to Las Vegas. They get married at a chapel in, in like, a drunken state at 3 a.m. Um, and then she's like, I have to have really awful sex with him so he doesn't like me. Which mm-hmm. she proceeds to do. And in the morning, he's like, listen, babe, we just weren't meant to be. And she's like, what? What do you no. mean? I, I love you so much. And he's like, mm, baby girl, I think Annulment. Not. Yeah. Annulment. Um, which is fine for her. She's like, cool, sick. Um, and then... After the annulment, media runs with that, but she got pregnant when she hooked up with him. And Celia initially knew about, like, the marriage farce. She wasn't super on board. She didn't know that Evelyn was going to sleep with him. And Evelyn was like, it was implied. What do you think he wanted? Mm -hmm. Celia up and leaves. And Evelyn's like, well, I'm not having this baby. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and Celia and I are not speaking. So she calls Harry and Harry's like, we're going to Tijuana to to get get that thing out of there. Um, and sure enough, she does. And then she comes back and she's like, all right, I'm in the dumps from Dawn. Got this McReva thing, but it's not enough to get my career back on the move. Right. So enter, um, Max. He is a French director. No, she marries Harry next. He, they aren't getting married. She's just starring in the movie oh. to get her career back on okay. track. <laughs> Enter Max. He is a French director, and she's like, I need to go to Europe because nobody here is hiring me. And there's, like, this movie coming up that's a little risque that I can use to catapult my career Oh, wait, back. no. She was with Rex next. She didn't film that first? No, because this is this. She does um, Anna Karina. She doesn't do that first, though. Yeah, she, she does. Because he's the count and counter and yeah. See. But they wouldn't hire her there. She had to do the other movie first. That bullet on train is what got her back into Hollywood. Is it? Because we've got her abortion here. Her abortion. And then she's talking about seeing pictures, and then she marries the count. She do Anna Karina. Maybe she did Bullet on Train before she met. Because that's what she had to do that movie to get her. Yeah, okay, back so she's track. she does it like pretty early on. She must have done it before Mick. Anyway, she does this. She does it right? she does it when she's with Mick. Or like before she gets with Mick. Because she's writing these letters to Celia here. So she does that. So this is like a nearly a little bit topless before. shot. Anyways. Yeah, nearly topless. It cuts away right at the right moment. This gets Love her that. back into Hollywood. Then she gets pregnant. She gets married and old, then pregnant. Prince Celia break up abortion. Mm-hmm. Um, then, then Anna Karenina. Yes. Um, and enter Rex, what's his face? Yes, then she marries Rex, who was her co star. And he, they're up front from the beginning. She's like, I don't really like you. Like, we're not going to have sex or anything. This is just going to be great for our careers. Yes. And he's like, and I can, like, mess around with whoever. And she's like, go, go for, for it, it, babe. Um, and so they get married. And honestly, they have a pretty normal relationship. Like, this is the most normal relationship of them all. Except for one night when he gets a little drunk and he's like, you really never want to sleep with me. And, and she's, she's like, like, no, no. Not um, interested. Celia gets engaged to a man, and so Evelyn's like, what's going on there? Anna Karenina does really well at the box office. Yeah. Her and Celia are still not speaking. No. Um, and eventually, I mean, she's doing a lot more movies. Eventually, Rex is like, listen, I am in love with my ex. She's like, okay, let's plan this out so we can get divorced. And he's like, ooh, problem. She's pregnant. And she's like, fine. So she plants this scandal that she's been cheating on Rex um, and that he's been cheating on her. So neither of them are like in the wrong. Their careers aren't that hit that hard. Um, and she's single for a while. And then she's like, best friend Harry, bestie Harry. What if 
Well, what if we got married. She finds out. Right? Doesn't she find out here that John? Yeah. So she finds out that Harry is seeing John. Is seeing John, who is Celia's husband, because lots of beards. Yes, there, I think there's a quite, there's a part where she says we're four beards for each other. That made me laugh. Yeah. But this is what kind of initiates their Celia and Evelyn's relationship. Yes. Again. She because he's seeing the quarterback, and then Evelyn's like, so Celia, she's like not seeing anyone and Harry's like no and he's like I have an idea and that idea is that Harry and Evelyn get married while John and Celia are together and they'll just wife swap well Mm. partner swap they give their wives to each other and then they give their gay beards lots of gay beards yeah so you get it Um, then we start with the brilliant, kind-hearted, tortured Harry Cameron. Oh, Harry. They're doing their little swappy thing. They they moved to New York. Um, Harry and Evelyn buy an apartment, and John and Celia do, but John and Harry live together, together, and Celia and Evelyn live together. And Evelyn's doing a lot of movies. She's doing well. Eventually, at some point, her and Harry are like, we agreed one day we wanted to have kids. Mm-hmm. We but could adopt, but... I think we need to talk first. About Celia being a total bitch. Mm. Okay, this, their second relationship, I didn't like her the first time. I really did not like her the second time. Celia is like Dawn, where she, when she is not getting what she wants. It's when, Evelyn's fault. It's Evelyn's fault. Whenever she is going through something that is negative or like not super thrilled with something, it's Evelyn's fault. And Evelyn is a bitch for it. And instead of physically assaulting her she will verbally assault her yeah here's here's an uh celia wins an award and evelyn calls her and she says something this is what she says exactly the same evelyn i've been dealing with for years nothing's changed you're afraid of who you are and you still don't have an oscar you are what you have always been a nice pair of tits then part of Celia's problem, like we've already touched on, is that she can't accept the fact that Evelyn likes both men and women, because she has con- Celia has convinced herself that all of Evelyn's relationships with men have never meant anything to her other than just doing what she thought she had to do, because that's just how the yeah. world is. And but that's Evelyn little, it's is kind of problematic too, because she doesn't really love all of Evelyn. No, in that way. Yeah, you know? and then Evelyn's like very forward, like no, like I, I love Don. Don, like I did love him, like it wasn't like I was just with him for whatever and she is just like you know she says here that's how it was with celia when you denied her what she wanted when you hurt her she made sure you You hurt hurt her too and so she's hurt by evelyn's sexuality which is something that i don't think she has the right to be upset about and this is like one of the problems with this book is that i feel like Evelyn, not the book, but like Evelyn herself, is that she's given, she has given every excuse she possibly can to Celia, but Celia is just not a good person. Yeah. And she has spent her whole life being in love with somebody who's awful to her. Yeah. And we'll, there's a little more to discuss on Celia yeah. too, but, yeah. um, so, <sighs> they're like 36 at this point, most of them. They're in their mid late 30s. And this is at the point where Harry and Sil- uh, Harry and Evelyn are like, we've always wanted to have kids. If we adopt, it'll draw more suspicion. Right. right. They'll be like, why are they adopting? Um, and they both want, like, a biological kid. Mm-hmm. So they're like, well, we can't do artificial insemination either. Right. It's because it's still suspicious. new. Suspicious. Also new. And new. And so she, Evelyn approaches Celia and she's like, I want to have a baby with Harry. And we have to have sex to do that. And Celia Keep in mind, Harry is gay. Like, yeah. But, like, they just, they want a kid. So they'll do what they gotta do. Mm-hmm. Make the hardware work. And, uh, Celia is a little apprehensive at first. She doesn't really want kids, but she's happy to be, like, functioning in a cool aunt role. Mm-hmm. While Harry and Evelyn raise their daughter. So Celia finally consents. And Harry and Evelyn have a baby. And they name her... Connor mm-hmm. and they have a pretty good dynamic for a while yeah good little foursome of them. she was born I just realized she was born May 23rd 1975 my dad's birthday is May 22nd 1975 oh my god 
So that puts into perspective how young she is when she yes. dies. <laughs> um, so all four of them are raising Connor, essentially. Obviously, Evelyn and Harry are, are way more invested. Mm-hmm. Um, and then uh, Evelyn gets another movie role with Max. Um, and he wants Dawn to be in the movie, mm-hmm. her ex-husband. And um, her, Evelyn and Dawn meet. And Evelyn is like, we can do this movie, but like, there's some ground rules, right? And Dawn's like, I'm really sorry for what I did. I'm sober now. I should never have done that. And she's like, you know what? This is going to be good for her career. It'll be great publicity. I like the director, Max, the right. Frenchman. And I still hate Dawn, but I will do this. Because um, he's not as bad as he used to be. Yes. And then, so the movie's going well. And Max is like... I want you guys to have a sex scene, but I want the sex scene to be, like, about the female pursuit of pleasure, not, like, a woman aiming to please someone else. Like, Mm -hmm. a woman taking what she wants for herself in the act of sex. And it was kind of revolutionary for the time, so Evelyn's like, yes, we have to do this for um, the movie, we have to do it for, like, society, Mm -hmm. culturally, to make a statement. Um, And so... She does it, and then after the fact, she goes to Celia to try and pitch it to her, and Celia's like, yeah, that makes sense, but no. Yeah. That, you know what, that movie would be great for society, but no, I can't live with but it. But the reason why she says no is not because of society, it's because it's with Dawn. Right, and she, and, Cel- and Evelyn's like, I don't care about Dawn, like, it's just a movie, and she's like, yeah, but, like, you had sex with Nick, and you had sex with Harry, She was like, okay, but and she's like, we're I don't back even- to- we're back together. Like, you got over Mick. You told me I could have sex with Harry so we could have our daughter. And I didn't even actually have sex with Dawn. Yeah. It was just a movie. It was just fake. And so then... Celia! Evelyn is like, okay, well, I already did it. And then Celia's like, I'm leaving. Bye. Yeah. It's over. I'm not even going to talk to you anymore because you have betrayed my trust. What trust is that, Celia? There must be something... You know what? I feel like there's something that she's not telling us about this conversation. Because I just feel like... Either Celia, this, because she's painting Celia in such a bad light. But she also says that she's the love of her life. I know. That, that's all she wanted. But maybe Celia was just a bad person. I know. And she, you know, like, I don't know. I think Celia does a lot of things. They're, they're, st- they're movie stars. Like, that's how it works. And yeah. for her to be, like, upset about it, especially, like, when she didn't even have sex with Donna. It was just whatever. So Celia leaves. Also, Harry's gay. So, like... I, I can't imagine that they were having a lot of fun when they were no, they were trying to make procreating. A um, but Cecilia leaves, and their whole little dynamic is broken. Yeah. Um, and then, unfortunately, John dies. Yes. And Harry is Depressed. reeling. He is reeling, and uh, he's drinking. He's still being a good dad. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, now Evelyn's alone. Celia's gone and John is dead and we see in the headlines that Celia is best friends with a new female celebrity so Evelyn's a little hurt over that Mm -hmm. but she is trying to get Harry out of the slump and during this time you know she and Harry they're just pretty much co-parenting like they've always been just co-parenting but like at, it's to this point where, you know, he doesn't do anything because he's so sad and depressed and sleeps all day and doesn't do anything. And she, you know, is talking with Max, the director from the Brisk Game movie. Um, because Evelyn kind of gets blacklisted a little bit after it because mm-hmm. she filmed an X-rated movie, which is... Risque. Risque. And um, it does impact your... Viability. Yes. There's a there's a, a podcast I listen to called You're Wrong About, and they actually have a whole episode about the rating system for movies. It's very interesting if you want to go listen to that after this podcast, of course. So she gets a script from Max, and it's mm-hmm. good. And Harry's like, I like this. She Because she's also like, I need to give Harry work. Like, he's being a great dad, but I need to pull him out of this depression mm-hmm. with the one thing that he loves besides John, who is now dead. And so they find and Connor, this, their daughter. They find this project, and she's, like, I don't know, kind of into Max, Max. the director. And she's like, I'm so heartbroken over Celia, and I feel like he actually likes me, and I feel like I could like him. 
So her and Harry have a discussion where they're like, we don't need to be married anymore. And Harry's yeah. cool with it. And so... And they're married for like 13 years or something like that. Her longest marriage. And so yep. they get divorced and she gets married to disappointing Max Gerard. Immediately. Like, they get divorced so that she can marry him because she shows Harry like a letter that Max wrote where he's mm-hmm. like, I'm in love with you. I want you to be with you and whatever. So she and Max get together. And we come to realize that Max loves the idea of her yeah. more than her herself because he doesn't try to get to know her. He just wants her as arm candy. And he starts to get very angry and mean. Um, and then Celia wins another award on TV mm-hmm. and Evelyn watches. And um, she, you know. And to gets... anyone tempted to kiss the TV tonight, please do not chip your tooth. That was her acceptance. It's yeah. Part of her acceptance and then, but also, it's important to note that Evelyn did win an Oscar mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. one of her movies. Finally. Yes. And she gives a speech and she mentions, like, she's out there. Yeah. Vague. Vaguely. But very vague. We know who she's talking to. We do. The audience, so speculation. Then, then Celia wins. She mentions Evelyn in her speech covertly. And then Evelyn starts writing Celia letters. And they reconnect. And they're basically like, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And they decide, they get, they talk on the phone. And then they decide that Evelyn's going to go see Celia. And Evelyn plans out this whole trip. She has these letters that she's been sending back and forth with Celia and she get, she's getting ready to leave and she's like you know what I actually kind of want to bring those letters with me mm-hmm. and she walks upstairs Max has the letters strewn across the room and he's like you're he's, a lesbian he is calling her slurs she, I hate you he is being awful um and uh then she's like you know what you don't even like me you like yeah. the idea of me and I don't want to be with you anymore and he's like well I'll I'll tell everyone and she's like you're just gonna look like you're crazy. A disgruntled ex-spouse. Like, you're just going to look like you're saying anything you can mm-hmm. about me to look bad. Um, so then she goes to California. Evelyn goes to California. They, she meets up with Celia. They basically are like, well, we've, like, hooked up with other people, but it hasn't been the same. And they're both like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But then Celia is like, I have chronic obstructive pulmonary pulmonary disease me gonna die which means she's gonna die she has it's like a heart condition right yeah pulmonary yeah Yeah. but she's concocted this plan she's like listen you max done you are gonna marry my brother robert we are gonna move to europe where we can live our own quiet lives but we have to get harry on board and harry is unfortunately not not on on board Um, So they spend some time in L.A. for a movie, I believe. And uh, unfortunately, as she's trying, like, her daughter's getting older. She's a teenager. She's She's like like 15, I think, at this time. She's back in New York. And Evelyn has a conversation with her on the phone. She has a conversation with Harry. Harry's not on board um, because Harry has, like, fallen in love with someone else. And he didn't think he would do that after John. And he doesn't want to leave the country. Mm -hmm. But... Harry still has a drinking problem, and on her way to go pick up Harry from the house he's renting, they, her and her driver. Well, no, they, like, Harry comes up with a plan because he's met somebody, so he's like, Celia can marry him. Yeah. And I will marry you again. Which wouldn't have worked anyway, but we'll get to that. And she's like, okay, well, I'll come over and talk about it. And she's on her way there, and she gets to, like, his road. There's, like, a a car that's been rammed into a tree and so she and her driver get out and they inspect and they see that there's two people in the car one is he's dead is dead in, in the, the passenger seat. in the passenger seat yes and the other one is harry harry and he's drunk and so to protect harry's reputation she and her driver take harry out of the car put him in their car and drive him to the hospital and, and they, they put the, the passenger in the driver's seat yeah so they're like okay like this is fine and then she's like talking to harry but then the doctor's like listen like harry he's not gonna make it like he is going to die so she goes in and she says goodbye to him and then he dies yes um and then her kid goes off the deep end starts doing drugs she catches her daughter very Lindsay lohan of her and ellen's like we gotta go to europe we gotta get you out of here i want to be alone with celia so she gets married to celia's brother robert um and they live a somewhat normal life 
uh, Evelyn at some point comes out to Connor, and Connor's like, yeah, whatever, I don't care. Yep. Um, and Robert is a good dad substitute mm-hmm. for um, Harry to Connor. Um, and he teaches her a lot about, like, finance and stuff. Mm-hmm. And her and Celia have a symbolic marriage because she's married to Celia's brother, Robert. But mm-hmm. they, they, like, they do like, a little ceremony yeah. in their room. Um, and eventually Connor gets older. Yeah, and she then she goes to school, school in Stanford, and she starts working in finance. And uh, yeah, and then Celia dies six years after they moved to Europe. Yeah, but they had they had some good times together. Celia died in her arms in their bed, and obviously it was a very difficult loss. She goes right. to bury Celia at the same place that Harry is buried, and she goes to Harry's grave and cries and the media takes pictures but they're basically just like oh she's she misses harry Whatever. but she just misses everybody yeah and uh and then all of celia's stuff goes to robert which then in turn will go to evelyn mm-hmm. uh, which was the whole reason they got married in the first place so her, her assets could go and, and to like hide that they were together right um and then <laughs> it skips forward like a couple of years and evelyn and then- moves back to new york well, Robert dies. Robert dies. Evelyn moves back to New York to be with her daughter. And then her daughter dies of Her cancer. daughter gets breast cancer and dies. And then we're that's... basically caught up. Yeah. So that's how it ends. And then... So we're, we're in, like, the present time now. Which is why I say that this is just, like, the present time is just completely irrelevant. Because while this all this is happening, all Monique is doing is listening to her story and then being like, maybe I should apply some of this to my life. <laughs> and and like, she does. She, like, she gets a deal out of Vivant where she... Gets to keep her job until right. she can release a biography and stuff like that. She decides she wants to leave her husband. But Evelyn finally drops a bombshell of why she picked yes. Monique and why Monique's going to hate her. And it's because Monique's dad was the passenger in Harry's car. Right. So her dad was Harry's gay lover. And um, Evelyn gives her this letter that her father had written to Harry. And it basically says, like, I can't leave my wife. She is, like, my best friend. Right. Even though I'm attracted to you, I can never hurt her that way, and I love my daughter too much. So I'm not going to do this whole marriage farce with you, Celia, and Evelyn, and I wish you, like, all the best in the world, but I love my daughter so much. Right. Um, and so at first, Monique's pissed, and then the next day is, like, the shoot for the magazine for the pictures. So she ends up coming back, and her and Evelyn make some sort of amends. And she basically, Evelyn basically lets onto the fact, because she, she's sending her housekeeper Grace away on a vacation. Mm-hmm. She lets onto the fact, and throughout the book, Evelyn has been mentioning that she picked Monique also because Monique wrote this really excellent piece about physician Assist- assisted suicide. suicide. And Monique eventually figures out that Evelyn is planning on ending her own life because she also has breast cancer and she watched how her daughter died and she didn't want to go through that. So she goes, Monique goes through this little internal battle. Should I stop Evelyn? Should I let her do it? And she's like, you know what? She's lived such a long life. This is how she wants to die. I wrote that piece. She picked me because I wrote that piece. And she trusts me. And she gave me this story. So I'm going to let her do it. Her mom comes into town. Monique's mom comes into town. She decides she's getting divorced. Evelyn dies. And then the end of the book is the excerpt from Vivant with a little bit about um, what the biography is going to be on. And it also is like that, the epic TikTok line that I hear all the time where it's like, people always ask me about my husbands, but, um, what, oh, here, yeah. Is it this one? No, she told me, because they are just husbands. I am Evelyn Hugo. And anyway, I think once people know the truth, they'll be much more interested in my wife. And that's the end of the book. Anyways, so Honestly, Celia was insufferable. She was super selfish and she was also a hypocrite. Yeah, um, and she just constantly, once again, you can't be too mad at her because it is a different time. But considering the fact that she's a lesbian in, like, 1950s, 1950s, 60s, 70s, 80s of her entire life, but, like, living in that time period. But you'd think that, like, she would be more willing to be open-minded about sexuality, but she still only saw the world in black Black and and white. Opposed to seeing it in a multi a multiverse of color. Yeah, and she was also just like, when things were going well, she was nice. When they weren't, she was mean. Mm-hmm. I think that's just the truth of like, real relationships though. Like that, it's 
they were people, they were selfish people, they yeah. were people who were famous and rich. They weren't perfect and at least they got some semblance of happiness and peace in the end, but Yeah. Yeah, so that's that's it. That's the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Decent yeah. read. Not one of my not my all time favorite. No. But still still worth a read. Um and yeah, so that's about all for this episode. If you don't already follow us on social media, we have several accounts at the Woody Banter Book Club on Instagram, Facebook, Pinterest, and TikTok. TikTok. Um, for those of you listening on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, thank you. Thank you. We love Please you. Please leave a little rating for us. Yes. Um, for those of you watching on YouTube, seeing our beautiful faces, love you um please leave a like and if you haven't already subscribe to our youtube channel um as always thank you for the support as maddie said earlier we have that etsy store up with some fun bookmarks um so if you want to check that out we'd really appreciate it all the funds go towards the podcast our equipment our subscriptions that sort of thing um so we really appreciate all your support and as always happy reading should we have some pie now mm-hmm.